three, two, one, fire. Hey, it's me, Nathaniel. Have you ever looked up to something and wanted to control with your mind? Have you ever wanted to burn something down to the ground? Maybe not, but that's why I created a mind control flamethrower. Okay, before I start the video, I should probably say that in the United States, 48 out of the 50 states have no laws on flamethrowers. However, I may or may not live in one of those two states. So for legal reasons, I should probably say that what I'm building is not a flamethrower, as the definition of a flamethrower is, quote, as any non-stationary and transportable device designed or intended to emit or propel a burning stream of combustible or flammable liquid a distance of at least 10 feet. My flames are less than 10 feet and use gas instead of liquid. But hey, using machine learning to mind control a propane torch just doesn't sound as appealing. To start the project, we would first need a brain-computer interface, BCI for short. USB ports don't work, so this is the MindFlex, a toy from 2009, and it's an EEG. EEGs measure electrical activity in your brain. In the medical field, EEGs are used to detect abnormalities, such as epilepsy, seizures, or anything else that you can think of. In my field, EEGs are used to burn things to a crisp. I really didn't want to buy a $300 um, EEG or brain-computer interface, so I just bought the MindFlex for around $16 from eBay. I bet you can get it even for cheaper. And after hacking it, it sends raw data around 512 times per second, which is perfect for the project. Yeah, I kind of talked about the neural network for a little bit too long, so I'm just going to give you the gist here. I used a CNN, insert a joke about cable news network here, it's just a convolutional neural network. It basically acts as a filter extracting the features relevant between classifying standard mind data and fire mind data. To create the data set, I collected data on my own mind. For standard mind data, I just did homework, studied, or just word around the house. For fire mind data, I just stood in front of the computer and thought about fire really hard. The neural net runs on a Raspberry Pi 4 with TensorFlow Lite. Behind me, I've got the output of the neural net ready. Every single time that the computer thinks that I am thinking of fire, it should print out a line. That means that if I had a flamethrower on, a flame would have come out of my hand. Let's try it out. So as you could see, some lines printed, and I think that was like around 6 or 7 maybe, so that means if seven flames would have come out of my hand if I didn't have those safety precautions. For the second part of the project, we would need a flamethrower. Luckily, I already built one a year ago. It's inspired by Alan Pan's firebending video, and it's punch activated. Other than looking like a bomb, it worked pretty well. Here's a video of it. For this project, I changed the design of the original. I 3D printed a cover, I now wear fire resistant gloves, I put in a few more arc lighters, and I added a screen with a menu. These features make the flamethrower safe enough for mind control. So now, after all of that, I'm able to use machine learning in a toy from 2009 to mind control a flamethrower. Let's go test it. Three, two, one, fire. To spice it up a little bit, I did some lunches with the fire. For this next one, I filled up the balloon with just a tiny bit of propane. Here are some ones that went well. <coughs> Fire. Here are some ones that took a little bit too long. For all the late ones, there is one that was a little premature. Here, I cook some bacon. Fire. 
fire. Fire. Yeah, I tried roasting the marshmallows, but the fire activation was not on point here. After this, I changed the model and it was much better. This one is for all the imposters out there. So yeah, it was a little underwhelming. I'm no kung fu master, I really didn't do any tricks, and I think the best thing that I did was take a lunge with the flamethrower. Honestly, I still think that punch activation is better than mine activation because it's faster and more efficient. But this project was always more of a proof of concept for the EEG side of things than it ever was a flamethrower. It shows what we can do with machine learning being paired with old technology from 2009, and it allows us to imagine what we could do with new technology like OpenBCI. With a lot of more effort, a bigger data set, and better technology, this could honestly be adapted to help people with disabilities, people who are unable to communicate, or just using it in general everyday life. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, and goodbye.